Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this optic that you see in my hands right here. This is the Bro Tactical Optic or BTO. This is a fixed four power optic. It's got a uh, prism style glass in there. It's got shot glass in there. Um, and this one here is one of my most requested reviews. And the reason for that is that many of you guys who watch the channel know that I am a big fan of the Trichicon ACOG. I just really like it. It has its uh, pros and cons like anything out there, but it's a very good optic uh, in terms of performance for the weight and for the durability of it. That's really, really why I like it. It has very simple reticles that are easy to use. And this one here, the BTO and also the BCO, which is the one I believe that preceded this, um, basically mimic that and claim to improve upon that. So uh, this here was designed by a man named Brian Bro, who was the former operations, our head of operations for Trigicon. I think he worked there for like 15 years. And basically he broke off on his own to make a, what he thought was, or what he claims is an improved ACOG, right? So that's what a lot of people think this is. And basically the reasons for that is that it has a lot of the same features that people like about ACOG. So for instance, a very durable housing, very compact, very lightweight, has excellent shot glass. It has simple reticles that I talked about earlier that are very easy to use, calibrated for individual uh, calibers. So they're very simple, they're very fast, and they're very effective in terms of combat performance but they claim they have an improved operating system. So we're gonna get into that and all the other details of this particular optic after the dogs check it out, coming up next. When your optic arrives, it's gonna come in this nice plastic case here. It is lockable should you choose to do so, and it will have custom fit foam for your optic. So we'll take that out there. And it will also come with a lens cleaning pen. So you can clean your lenses without having to worry about scratching them. And it will come with an extra battery. There will also be a battery in the optic itself. And of course your manual on the back side of the case, it'll list all the pertinent information for your particular optics. So the serial number reticle, uh, model number, all of that stuff will be on there. Set that aside and move on to the optic. The body of the optic is made of 7075 T6 aluminum. This one, of course, has the uh, FDE coloration on there, but the black one's going to have that type 3 hard anodizing. I would imagine this probably does as well underneath the actual finish that you guys see there. On the left side of the optic, you're going to see the control housing, which we'll get into in pretty good detail here in just a second. The optic does come with an American Defense quick detach lever built into it. It is adjustable so that way you can set it uh, for the tension that you want in your particular rail because 1913 spec rails aren't all in spec as many of us know. <laughs> Over here on the uh, right side of the optic we do have the battery compartment and I will possibly, if it doesn't take too long, undo the battery cap. And you guys will see that it is sealed. Everything on this thing is going to be sealed, O-ring sealed, and it's going to have lubricated lubricated threads on there and it will have a CR123 battery with it when it ships and uh, it is powered by that. It's going to give you 2,000 hours of runtime and uh, it does have an auto shut off which I suppose we'll get into now since I'm talking about it but the auto shut off uh, basically when you turn it on it's going to have four hours and if it uh, four hours of runtime I should say and uh, if it doesn't sense any movement it will shut itself off so that way it will conserve the battery energy and to turn it back on you're just gonna press that button. But again, we'll get into that here in just a second. The uh, elevation and windage adjustments are both gonna be half MOA click. And um, it does basically work with uh, the rim of a cartridge, a screwdriver, anything like that can be used to turn it. Each of those clicks is very tactile, very audible. Um, and you'll also see, of course, that is O-ring sealed as well. This optic is submersible down to 40 meters. So uh, I'd imagine most of us aren't going to be submersing our optic that far, so you can pretty well uh, safely assume that for those of us who are going to use it hunting, maybe like a law enforcement patrol rifle or something like that where you're going to be out in the elements, you don't have to worry about it at all. 
There are a few other things going on with the body that I wanted to mention before moving on. So back here at the rear, we do have a 30 millimeter lens. So any rear 30 millimeter um, scope covers, caps and such can clip on there. And you can see there that that ring is machined into the body just like it would be on a lot of scopes. So it will clip on there and sort of lock into place. They also sell over on their website, both um, clear and not clear covers if you wanna pick those up from them. Up here on the front of the optic, you'll see that it is threaded on the inside. So that way, if you want to run an anti-reflection uh, device, you can actually screw it in there. And uh, you don't have to worry about you know using like rubber bands or anything like that to secure it in place. And again, they also have that ring cut into the optic itself. So that way you can put scope caps on there. Again, they aftermarket ones will fit, but they also offer their own in both clear and see-through, uh, which certainly is nice. Now you'll see these two screws here up top. That is so that you can mount a shield optic on there if you want to do so. So this is obviously is a fixed four power scope. So if you wanted to put a red dot on top to be able to use that at up close uh, shooting distances, you certainly can do so with that mounting option. As we mentioned earlier, this is the control button here on the optic. So the instructions are actually written on the outside. Should you ever get confused, but basically you're just gonna hit it once and that's gonna go into automatic. And then if you wanna hit it again to get to manual to control the brightness yourself, you can do so. And then you can press and hold to turn it off. So we're just gonna kind of show you here how that automatic mode works if I can with the camera. So basically, one thing that's different about this versus some competitive offerings out there that we'll show you here in just a second is that this has um, a system that adjusts the illumination based on where the target is. So um, wherever those that chevron in this case or the crosshairs, depending on the reticle that you get, are oriented at, it's going to pick up the light that's coming from around your target and adjust the illumination of the uh, optic itself to that. So basically you can see I'm probably about six inches off the mat here. And you can see that the target is pretty bright. Obviously I know it's not in focus, but it will show you the effect that I'm talking about here in just a second. Whereas if I bring my hand in there, start cutting off the amount of light that's coming through, you'll see that it starts to dim very quickly and goes down to about the lowest setting. When we get it completely covered up, you can see it's still illuminated a little bit because some light is coming through. And then again, it goes to the bright there. So what that's doing, or rather the thing that's doing that is that little sensor that you guys can probably see there on the camera that's again, focused where your target is and it's picking up the light and automatically adjusting it uh, as you guys just saw there. So there's a few advantages to that over like, let's say, of course you guys are gonna wanna compare it to the TA31 uh, four power optic, which has the tritium and fiber optic. So what that's going to do is it's going to pick up the light where you are. So let's say um, if you're in a dark room and you're shooting out into a bright, I don't know, area, it's going to be illuminated based on where you're at. So there's not gonna be a lot of ambient light where you are in a dark room shooting out into a bright area. It's just not gonna be as bright as the things around the target. So it's, I guess, suboptimal for those sort of uh, situations. And the opposite is true as well. So if you're shooting from a bright area into a dimly lit area, it's going to be a little bit too bright for most circumstances when you're doing that. So that really is one advantage I do see to this optic versus some of the other offerings out there for sure. If you want to switch to manual, you can do so again and just hit it one more time and you'll be able to control it um, to the brightness setting that you want. It does have, I believe, six settings, a couple of those being night vision compatible. So if you guys want to run it with night vision, you're more than welcome to do so. It's capable of that. But that is basically how the illumination system works. Bro offers a number of different reticles for this optic in both uh, 556 as we have here, 7.62 by 51 or 308. They also offer it in 300 blackout and 7.62 by 39. So there's definitely a few offerings out there and they offer it in both the Chevron configuration that we have here as well as a crosshair as well as a horseshoe and dot. So again, you have a good bit of options there. Now it is calibrated at least in 556 anyway. It's calibrated for M855 ammo so 62 grain um, stuff coming out of a m4 so a 14 and a half inch barrel of course you can adjust it as you see fit if you're using say a 16 inch barrel you just adjust your point of zero and you will be pretty darn close um, but basically it's designed to have the tip of the chevron 
zero to 100 meters, and it is in meters. And then you can see your uh, steady lines as we go down. So at 400 meters, that's where you're gonna be. Again, 500 just below 600, all the way down to 800. And those lines there are going to be designed to measure um, the average person's torso or shoulders rather. So whether a person is standing up looking at you or down in the prone position, you're gonna put that line on them when it basically goes across their shoulders that gives you a quick range estimation of the distance that are at and it kind of gives you an idea to be able to gauge the distance in the field in a very quick way and get on target and you know it's not designed to be uh, the ultimate prs uh, type of optic it's designed to be a combat effective optic and that quick ranging system does work for sure now for the comparison that I'm sure some of you guys have been clamoring for all along. So we have a uh, Trigicon TA31 ACOG here, and then we have the TA02. Both excellent optics that I've reviewed in the past. If you guys haven't seen those, go check those reviews out. But basically, we're just going to sort of take them as they come. So uh, these are all fixed four power prism style scopes. Um, very durable, very rugged, all excellent in that regard. They're going to have some similar shortcomings. So one of them, of course, is going to be the fact that um, you're going to have a very short eye relief with these scopes. It's something that a lot of folks don't like. Um, there are ways to sort of work around it and improve it. I actually have a video on that where it's uh, less of a problem, but they're all going to have that uh, sort of issue. They're all going to have the huge plus of having a huge field of view. So all of these are going to give you a field of view of about 37 feet at 100 yards which is excellent in that regard. So that's the trade-off you get with the short eye relief, you get the large field of view. So that certainly is good. Um, we'll compare these two right now. Uh, of course, the TA31 has dual illumination, so you're gonna have this fiber optic rod up top that's gathering light again from where you are as the shooter and delivering it down into the reticle and illuminating it. It also has tritium in there, and that's gonna give you illumination regardless of the lighting conditions for about 12 years. So I took a couple photos here, um, both outside on my uh, porch, as it was very, very bright outside, and that was with the bro on the automatic setting. Also, this one here just gathering light as it comes. So you guys can see sort of how those compare side to side. Then I stepped inside into a relatively dimly lit room and then uh, was facing out into the bright sunlight just to kind of give you guys an idea of how that looks. Of course, it's going through my window, so don't go for glass clarity here. Um, but just to give you guys an idea of how the uh, reticles illuminated it, again, that was going to be with the bro on the automatic setting. So that's sort of how they stack up in that regard. But um, you guys can see here how they run size-wise. The bro here is going to be a little bit wider due to that battery compartment. Um, but uh, this doesn't give you the option to manually adjust your brightness, but your brightness is always there, if you will. So that certainly is a good thing there with the 31. And part of the reason it's one of the most popular optics in America. Now the TA-02 here is Trigicon's LED option. So uh, this one here was their first, I believe anyway, LED ACOG that they put out. I think they did that in 2014 or 15, um, but it's been relatively popular as well. Um, you guys can see here, it does have the battery compartment on the right side, just like the Bro. However, this one takes AA batteries versus the CR123. I don't really have a huge preference there either way. Uh, one thing to note here is that with the TA-51 mount that this one comes with, uh, this one here on my scale weighed in at 18.1 ounces, and then the Bro on my scale weighed in at 16.6 .6 ounces. Again, both of those are with the battery with the mount. So uh, a little bit lighter there for the Bro, but both of them are gonna be super durable. Um, you know, tough optics, especially for the money, or for the weight rather, I should say. For the weight, these are some of the really the better performing optics out there on the market in my personal opinion. But the LED adjustable uh, piece here on the ACOG is over here on the left side. It doesn't have an auto sensor, but it does allow you to manually adjust it and does have an off position in between, which I do like as well. Again, I have a full review on this particular ACOG as well, but that's sort of how they stack up between some different offerings from Trigicon, which I'm sure is what many of you guys want to know. We covered a lot of the details of the optics so far, but one big one that I know folks want to know about is going to be the price point, and it is absolutely not cheap, unfortunately. So this one here over on the Bro website goes for $1,395, so absolutely not cheap at all. Now, some redeeming qualities to that, of course, is that it does have the built-in uh, quick detach mount, so you don't have to buy one if you're going to do so for an ACOG. 
I'm sure they run sales and stuff like that from time to time, but for those looking to grab one, we will throw links down below for those of you guys looking to check it out. Now, a couple things. Uh, many of you guys may remember a few years ago, these were really hot. So like 2013, 2014, when they were first coming out, a lot of folks were really getting into them. And if you look at a lot of the reviews on forums, you're going to see them from about that time frame. But one thing that happened that was uh, kind of, I guess, bad for bro was that their factory where they sourced their glass was the Shot Optical Factory, as I probably said a few times in this video already. That one had a huge fire, and uh, basically their order was not filled for a long time until the factory was back up. So they basically lost about a year in terms of commercial sales and being able to fill their orders. And it seems like some of the momentum kind of wore off. But um, after that, they came out with this one here, which is a BTO from the original, I believe, BCO. I believe I'm saying that correctly. And uh, these have started to get out there in the marketplace now, as you guys see with me having this one here. And uh, I think they're starting to gain a little bit more popularity as well. I know they're also starting to get a lot more military contracts. So I believe they have contracts with Israel, with Great Britain, with Peru, and I'm sure several other countries that I'm not remembering off the top of my head from my research. I know, uh, for instance, UK Soft with their 300 blackout rifles has gone to these with that uh, little red dot on top that I mentioned earlier. You guys can see a picture of it as I'm rolling it in here from their use and their testing. Um, they've liked it, and I believe they've actually ordered a second order from Bro, which certainly is a good sign. So basically, why would you get this if you want to get an ACOG? First and foremost, I'm not telling you not to get an ACOG. I like ACOGs. You're going to see them here on the channel for a lot longer. Um, but I would say that this one here, in a lot of ways, is definitely um, as good as the ACOG in a lot of ways. So in terms of glass cl clarity, I can't tell a difference. Side to side, they look equally clear to me, which is excellent. I've said before many times here on the channel that ACOGs have some of the best glass on the planet. I stand by that. Uh, put bro in that category as well. It's super, super clear, has excellent contrast, has excellent clarity. Um, again, super easy to use reticle. It's on. I use this with a 16 inch rifle, mostly with M193. But again, you just adjust your zero, put it in a little ballistic app, and it's been on all the way out to, I've used this out to 600 yards. So it's definitely on in that regard. And again, very quick to use, simple to use. And it is a very durable optic like we talked about earlier. It doesn't have the track record that Trijicon ACOGs have, right? It just doesn't. ACOGs have been out since, I think, like the late 80s. Um, and these ones have only been out for, you know, less than 10 years now. However, they're starting to gain some popularity in military uh, circles out there. And I know now in the U.S., these have been out for, what, five years now? And folks are certainly using them and uh, reporting good things from everything I've seen on the Internet. One thing you don't have with this, which you'd have with like the Trijicon TA31, for example, and other dual illuminated ones, is you don't have to worry about the tritium ever burning out. It's battery powered. You know, I think the battery life on this with uh, maximum use, I think, is like 2,000 hours. Again, it does have the auto shut off, though. Um, but should your battery go dim, number one, you have an edged reticle, so you can still use it. And uh, whenever you get back to putting the battery in, you're back in business and you don't have to worry about the tritium. So... That is a pro to it as well. And the uh, auto illumination system, it works fantastic. I mean, I've never seen it not work. It's very fast and it works regardless of conditions you're in. Again, from inside to outside works fine. From outside to inside works fine. From under a you know brush shooting into a bright open field works fine. So that really is a pretty cool system that they have there. If you guys have any questions about the optic that I didn't cover here in the review, you can always post them down below in the comments section. I think I hit most of the details though. Uh, also, the better place to ask those for me these days is over on my Facebook page. I tend to see those comments and questions over there more than I do here on YouTube in full 30. But as always guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and hope to see all of you in the next video.